Hi everyone, my name is Hadi and I'm a journalist and communication specialist. I believe that as Africans, we should be in charge of every narrative coming out of Africa. We have a lot of positive stories to tell and share with the world, and I'm determined to use my platform to make that a reality. This is why I've teamed up with the Fata Network to bring you a brand new show, Stories from the Continent, every Saturday at 4 p.m. Do make sure you there will be lots of fun, informative, and impactful conversation. Hello, man, so do you have everyone uh thank you for joining us and staying with us uh, i apologize profoundly for uh the technical technical issues that we're facing uh but we'll get right back into it uh we've already introduced uh Madam vice president uh fatimata jalo tambajang uh she's told us about her career growing up and being a young woman uh, and, and madam vice president i just want to want you to kind of go back a little bit uh, you talked about being married at 16, a very young age, uh, you, you know, what we would today call a, a child bride. And I know you're, you've been very open about this. Uh, tell us what that was like and how you've confronted that to be where you are today. Um, well, I feel that there are pros and cons uh, in child marriage, just as pros and cons in every aspect of life. Mm -hmm. uh, pros, um, it's a it's a window of opportunity, mm -hmm. sort of inspiration mm -hmm. uh, for people to know uh, the capacity, mm -hmm. the capacity that God has provided them with mm -hmm. the challenges. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you an uh, early maturity yes. uh, in life, mm -hmm. uh, responsibility, mm -hmm. um, and also it provides you uh, the opportunity of also um, being a responsible, responsible mm -hmm. uh, mother or mm -hmm. parent. Mm -hmm. uh, the cons are it limits the opportunities or potentials Mm -hmm. to give your dream mm -hmm. like i was saying i wanted to be a medical gynecologist medical okay. doctor gynecologist mm -hmm. um i was fascinated by this and i thought it was a calling for me because mm -hmm. i i love children and i wanted to really be part of uh children coming to this world and caring for children yeah and their, and their mothers mm -hmm. and i said uh, but uh, as destiny uh held it mm -hmm. oh, I, I got this ordained it i was um, I, I had to cut short i had to um do or pursue a different career like mm -hmm. i did uh, language french language mm -hmm. i because uh, already i had four children to take care of yes and it would have taken me seven years leave my children to do medical and then the financing of also mm -hmm. uh, have been really some uh, challenging. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents were willing to help me to rebuild my life after mm -hmm. uh, the marriage. Mm -hmm. um, then also, it um, 
it, it, it just also strengthened and empowered me because mm -hmm. this was a, a new journey mm -hmm. that I had to take. Yeah. And just to make sure that I did my best in terms mm -hmm. of providing my, giving my best capacity to, mm -hmm. to succeed in my studies. I did uh, language mm -hmm. at university and then I went to, to France for mm -hmm. four or five years. Mm -hmm. um, after graduation, 1980, 1st of April 1980, I joined the United Nations Development Program yes. in the Gambia, where mm -hmm. I worked 14 years. Mm -hmm. When I was working, I also contributed to civic uh, um, civic responsibilities, civic yes. uh, service. Like mm -hmm. um, in terms, of, I was chairperson of the National Women's Council mm -hmm. for six years under the leadership of our father of, our, of the nation, the late uh, Sadaw Rakaira Bhai Jawara, mm -hmm. made first in perfect peace and grant and the grant mm -hmm. in Canada to put those, I mean. Um, and then on women and children, advice on women and children. Mm -hmm. and in 1994, when the chain came, the junta took over. Mm -hmm. um, I was asked, according to uh, the president and some people, uh, very highly positioned people, elder, uh, respected people in our society, mm -hmm. to join the junta to help them, mm -hmm. uh, guide them to bring back the country to democratic growth. Mm -hmm. Um, I worked with them for seven months mm -hmm. and realized that it was a no-go area that mm -hmm. they were determined to stay, to overstay. Mm -hmm. and so as a Democrat, mm -hmm. um, I decided uh, to leave. Okay, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later on, uh, Madam Vice President, but I'm just, uh, just so impressed by your positivity and your positive outlook in life and how, you know, something like a child marriage, I think it could be, you know, it's a challenge for many people, but you started with saying, you know, the pros of it are, and then, you know, and how you kind of uh, uh, navigated that experience. Uh, also, I want to get into... Um, right now at the time like you said you were a mother of four you're now a mother of eight uh you've been blessed with a beautiful family uh beautiful daughters uh one of them a very good friend nafi uh what lessons madam vice president did you learn from your parents that you're implementing in raising your children now um i've learned uh very good excellent lessons mm -hmm. um i've learned to really be a good mother, mm -hmm. responsible mother, mm -hmm. and I've learned to appreciate, I appreciated my parents, the support my parents, mm -hmm. a lot of family members gave me in raising my children. Mm -hmm. Because the blessing is that uh, living, raising your children in the African context mm -hmm. uh, has a lot of comparative advantage. You have everybody is taken care of supporting you and helping to raise the children. So even though some responsibilities are totally your responsibility when it comes to even financing, your parents would have could contribute. My parents really contributed financially, physically and morally to mm -hmm. raise their children. Mm -hmm. I also learned to really um, to be able to really contribute to the welfare of, the, of other children. So mm -hmm. beyond the welfare of my children, mm -hmm. uh, I was inspired by my children mm -hmm. to really help other children who were underprivileged mm -hmm. uh, to really realize their potentials by mm -hmm. supporting them morally and probably also mm -hmm. financially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I said in the beginning also that you were named uh, African Woman of the Year. You've told us about the you know amazing stuff that you've done so far i think your experience speaks for itself really uh you're globally acclaimed and respected as one of the most influential female leaders in the continent how, do, how does that feel i feel good mm -hmm. but also i'm not complacent mm -hmm. um i feel that life is a journey mm -hmm. and it's, it's a journey of educating yourself from the cradle to the grave. Absolutely. I, I like uh, learning, continuous mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. Because in order to be relevant as a leader, you need to be informed. Mm -hmm. You need to have the capacity, the vision, mm 
mm-hmm. to pick the people you need to have an edge over the people you lead mm-hmm. and um, I you also have to have the social capital mm-hmm. you need people it is mm-hmm. the people who welcome you when you come to this world and the, the people who accompany you when you are no more Absolutely. living when you are accompanied to the grave it is the people so you need to build that social capital mm-hmm. you need to have a lot of respect and self-discipline also mm-hmm. so I feel I I need to just work I in order also to to be an influential leader mm-hmm. you need to network you need to have very good contacts and good network mm-hmm. uh, you need to be a good listener mm-hmm. um, in order to see how best you can really make a difference Mm-hmm. My aim is always to make a difference wherever I am. Mm-hmm. And I know I cannot make a difference without really having people around me, mm-hmm. people supporting me. And I support, I'm also recipro- reciprocating uh, their support yes. um, because no one is an island. Mm-hmm. So yes. I feel good, as I say, but I'm not also complacent. I still have the journey of learning from other people, mm-hmm. um, adapting to certain situations. Mm-hmm. And, and helping also, I, I like to help other people mm-hmm. no the way I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and finally, I think I'm mm-hmm. democratic in the true sense of the word. Mm-hmm. And so um, I can consider myself, mm-hmm. my country has considered me, uh, and I'm grateful for that. I'm honored mm-hmm. and grateful for that mm-hmm. as, a, as a Democrat. Mm-hmm. I really want to be part of those who struggle for their country. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I have made, uh, I've seen a lot of less, learned a lot of lessons. Yes, standing on those principles. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, you. You talk about your country and loving your. You know, it is a country that uh, we both deeply care for, and I'm sure everyone watching cares for too. So let let me start by asking you uh, your assessment of the Gambia today compared to when the new government that you were a part of took over in 2016? Um, no system, I always say that, I'm always, I try to be realistic, that no mm-hmm. system is perfect. Mm-hmm. The human beings are not perfect. Mm-hmm. So we don't, I never consider things being perfect. Mm-hmm. But I am one principal person that I think, um, uh, need whatever what we are doing that we do it in the um, in the entire interest of our country. Mm-hmm. I like um, uh, from the change the change of 22 years, which we already know yes. what was con- uh, characterized by. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know that here today we have the new government mm-hmm. that really ushered mm-hmm. uh, democracy. Uh, mm-hmm. perhaps part people would say not democracy in total mm-hmm. but in terms of the most uh, basic necessities of life like uh, freedom of expression mm-hmm. freedom of association mm-hmm. um, rights for all mm-hmm. um, and also uh, we have also seen the rise, rights to, to for freedom of expression as I was saying mm-hmm. we have that mm-hmm. and we also have seen uh, the projects that are coming on, mm-hmm. like OIC project program, mm-hmm. uh, which is going to be launched in 2022, but it's, it's significant, Canberra is going to host. Mm-hmm. We have seen the infrastructural development, mm-hmm. um, and also we have seen in the, the bridge mm-hmm. between the Basse and uh, Sandu, Basse and I see, think Sandu bridge. We mm-hmm. have seen also um, with the blessing of Allah, rain this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anticipating that we will have a bumper season. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, we also have seen uh, partners coming. Mm-hmm. You have supported us from the word go, mm-hmm. when nobody, nobody was there for us. The yeah. European Union was there for us to support the government. Mm-hmm. They gave us budget. They gave them budget support, and they gave us peace and reconciliation packages. They start continue their programs, their projects. The UNDP also, UN system also, by and by, were there for us. Yes. Uh, World Bank and IMF were all there for us. Now, in terms of challenges or perhaps limitations or weaknesses of the system, 
Uh, there has been, uh, to my mind, in my humble mind, and this is also an opinion, uh, which and I sub is subject to discussion and also constructive criticism, mm -hmm. uh, is the fact that there has not been uh, focus on the agenda mm. the, the coalition government adopted. Institutional mm -hmm. reform, mm -hmm. asset recovery, mm -hmm. Reconciliation, truth and reconciliation that has been focused and is made progressing well. Uh, recovery of assets have been done, uh, have been completed, but the constitutional reform, which is the pillar of the agenda, uh, is yet is in is 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 in is suspending. Mm -hmm. it's in suspension, suspension. Mm -hmm. I mean because uh, it has been rejected by the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. And uh, that being the bedrock of democracy, the bedrock of good governance, mm -hmm. and having to have it rejected mm -hmm. uh, is, a, is a setback for the Gambia. Absolutely. I am living honestly, and I am speaking honestly, and I want to die honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not criticizing any individual. Mm -hmm. I'm criticizing the system. Mm -hmm. and the direction that the government is taking. Mm -hmm. um, I am, as a senior citizen and as still the chairperson of the coalition, mm -hmm. may what people think about the coalition, mm -hmm. the spirit of coalition is there, people are still respecting the coalition because it is through the instrument, it is the instrument that God used to bring mm -hmm. change to government. Absolutely. To mm -hmm. So I, I, I stand to to continue mm -hmm. in the government mm -hmm. at the highest level. Okay. So, so, you that. So, so that we can see how mm -hmm. best we can create a space, mm -hmm. uh, uh, having a national dialogue, a comprehensive and inclusive national dialogue. Mm -hmm. but again, the constitution, mm -hmm. look at what we, that, that are non, not uh, in compliance with our heritage and culture. Mm -hmm. and and then adopt it so that we can go into the third republic. Mm -hmm. The change, the fundamental aim of the change, the vision of the change was to take Gambia to a democratic uh, state, mm -hmm. take it into a, a state that would respect the rule of law, mm -hmm. that the, the rights of gender, women and children and youths, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of equal opportunities, mm -hmm. and also the rights to, to, to access to justice. Mm -hmm. So these are things that uh, I remain really priority on, on my mind mm -hmm. as a challenge also. All the okay. challenges, all the challenges of the government, um, the system is the the fire and fire of people. Mm -hmm. the, just like the German style, mm -hmm. the higher you fire, you hire somebody. There's a lot of that going on at the moment. It is going on. Mm -hmm. It's fundamental today. We will, we need to focus. The focus should be completing the agenda in mm -hmm. totality. Mm -hmm. Of course, having the reforms, the civil service reform is still also incomplete. And mm -hmm. that's also uh, a major pillar. Mm -hmm. we, we have not before finished it. And now mm -hmm. uh, there is also a surge of removal, mm -hmm. movement of ambassadors, mm -hmm. competent ambassadors who have who are experienced, who are committed, mm -hmm. who are patriotic, mm -hmm. moving them mm -hmm. with other people who mm -hmm. perhaps we don't know and maybe not, may not be as competent as the people that we are removing. Mm -hmm. It's a big challenge and I would like it to check is. the government to see how best they could address that. Mm -hmm. It is. But let, let us look more, kind of focus more on, on the Gambia as a country. You know, 55 years we have been independent now. Uh, and I know that for a fact, some of the elements that we're still defined by, uh, poverty, corruption, and some of the things that, that, that you've also mentioned, as, you know, as stereotypical as it sounds. Uh, but when you look, when you look at the country uh, from the outside, this is a country with 2 million people, uh, the smallest country in mainland Africa. We have land fertile enough to feed ourselves and neighboring countries. I keep repeating on every show, we have beaches, we could have tourist attractions, safari, a very young population. 
Yet, uh, Madam Vice President, we're still unable to establish ourselves as a leader in Africa. So where are we going wrong, fundamentally? Just picking up from where I ended mm -hmm. was the, the issue of um, the non-compliance or the slow space of the implementation of the reform. Mm -hmm. And part of it is the health system. Mm -hmm. the health sector, if you look at the health sector, the educational sector, mm -hmm. uh, uh, these are areas that need to really major improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, the COVID-19, which has happened, mm -hmm. uh, by, not by coincidence, but, but by, unless, uh, by fate, mm -hmm. uh, it has been an opportunity for, for us to uh, refurbish, overhaul the health mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. and uh, institute certain technologies like um, the online learning that the COVID has uh, exposed us to. Mm -hmm. uh, we are also looking at poverty. Mm -hmm. Poverty, rate of poverty is rising. It's not mm -hmm. economically. Uh, if you look at it, you look at the index, human development index. If you look at the human development index today, Gambia is below the human development mm -hmm. index among mm -hmm. the West African countries, even in the continent. Mm -hmm. If you look at the the economics, they are talking about growth. Mm -hmm. The growth before the COVID was growing slowly, economic growth, but then this has been stagnated by the COVID, but mm -hmm. also by a limited focus on the physical policy, implementation mm -hmm. of physical policy. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have to look at the, if you look at the World Bank reports, the IMF reports, mm -hmm. uh, the monitoring reports, technical backstopping reports, you find that government is behind the mm -hmm. commitments that they, they had made. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all part of financial indiscipline, fiscal indiscipline. So is the, is the issue... Have, yeah, the people have what is water and sanitation for health sector. Mm -hmm. For 55 years, people beyond like 100 kilometers, 100, mm -hmm. uh, 100 uh, miles or kilometers are mm -hmm. yet to access water and sanitation. Mm -hmm. With the COVID, mm -hmm. the impact of the COVID, they're telling people to wash their hands, social distancing, and when poverty, because of poverty, they are they are supposed they are obliged to go to the market and have their daily. Is so the, the fundamentally, mm -hmm. we need to look at review our the overhaul, mm -hmm. our development paradigm, and so move yeah. it into a direction that will bring human beings at the center of development. That is the human development aspect. People must have decent lives. People must have uh, access to basic resources, basic yes. facilities. Mm -hmm. Women must have access to financial resources, mm -hmm. like uh, the Gambia Women's Finance Association, so many associations that are trying to help the vulnerable. Banks mm -hmm. are trying, but we have to understand that mm -hmm. the banks are there for profit making. Government, mm -hmm. my humble view, should engage banks to say that, wait a minute, now mm -hmm. we have a situation, the COVID mm -hmm. situation, what can you do for our people? It has been done in Liberia. Rwanda has done it. Uganda has done it. Mm -hmm. Gambia needs to sit and with the banks and say, wait a minute, the COVID is here. What can you do for our indigenous businesses? Mm -hmm. the, the fundamental challenge is here in the Gambia today is that it's more of promoting the international business people like Asians and, mm -hmm. and, and other people mm -hmm. than the people, the indigenous businesses. Mm -hmm. There is no country that can move if mm -hmm. the indigenous entrepreneurs, the indigenous business, businesses are mm -hmm. not promoted, they are not financially empowered. Mm -hmm. Government is not government giving them resources, but they are sometimes responsible for giving them subsidies, like mm -hmm. we have in Senegal and other countries. Mm -hmm. when, when the economic, there is economic recession, economic stagnation, mm -hmm. caused by uh, interacting, interacting uh, factors like the COVID, Mm -hmm. the decline, there is need for government to support them, provide them with subsidies so yes. that they can, they can, they can survive mm -hmm. uh, shock mm -hmm. and move into creating growth, creating employment. Yes. There is also need for youth employment. Absolutely. And youth empowerment. Mm -hmm. These are things. No matter what they do, they, it should be around, around the, the human capital. 
Okay, madam, it is the issue then to do with uh, leaders, because there are many who say that uh, leaders kind of put personal interests ahead of, of stability and the advancement of the country. So do you agree with this? I would say it's the imbalancing of power. Mm -hmm. power balance. Mm -hmm. When you are in power and you are expected mm -hmm. not only to look first and foremost what is in the interest of the people, work in the interest of the people. And when mm -hmm. you work in the interest of the people, in the exclusive mm -hmm. interest of the people, which is mm -hmm. the pillar and the mm -hmm. fund fundamental focus of the change we have, Absolutely. then we will look at the, uh, the issue of ensuring that we implement the, mm -hmm. the reform agenda. Security mm -hmm. reform is still incomplete. Mm -hmm. Civil service is still incomplete. Mm -hmm. The farmers are waiting for Oh, they are going to, they are harvesting. Mm -hmm. Are they going to have a better price for mm -hmm. their products? Mm -hmm. um, there are so many good projects that we mm -hmm. thought would be revived, like the Jahal Bachar project, rice production. Zambia mm -hmm. has the arable land. It's, it's a land of 113 square meters. Excellent. And the arable land is about 90%. Mm -hmm. Why can't Gambia feed herself? Mm -hmm. At the same time, reduce. The, the import of mm -hmm. rice, importation of rice, mm -hmm. uh, basically not necessarily like potatoes, onions, and so forth. These are things that we can grow. We can support our farmers to grow mm -hmm. so that we can uh, save the money that we spend on importation. Mm -hmm. or, or we can save on foreign, 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 foreign exchange, foreign currency mm -hmm. to really ensure that we have reserve in the central bank, which we never had when we came in, have a reserve in the central bank, and also take care of uh, dark days when mm -hmm. there are contingencies where on unforeseen circumstances in, in, in the world or in Gambia, that you can just take money. The other mentality is that the leaders need to look at inwardly. Mm -hmm. We need to look at what can we do first as a nation, as a country, as a people, mm -hmm. by bringing everybody on board which is also a challenge. Mm -hmm. We had committed ourselves to bring in the diaspora mm -hmm. into the equation, mm -hmm. bringing the, the brains that we have outside to use them to help us to complement government's mm -hmm. uh, capacity. And this was why we had also the, we launched the national think tank, which mm -hmm. is since from the time I left, it just died like that. And the mm -hmm. rationale for the national think tank is not to create, as some people mis uh, misconceived, Mm -hmm. that it was supposed to be like a quasi-government. It was supposed to be inclusively harnessing the human capital that mm -hmm. we have, both in local and also in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. So the people can come as short-term consultancies. Mm -hmm. Government doesn't even need to pay them. They need, mm -hmm. We can have programs from special programs like Doctrine from the UN and other mm -hmm. World Bank system where they can support people to come for two, three years, see if it works, build the capacity of local uh, Gambians, go back if they want, otherwise they stay in the country. Mm -hmm. Unless we use our human capital, which is by and large comparative to other countries, mm -hmm. uh, is larger than the country. Mm -hmm. You go everywhere in any organization, many organizations, you find Gambians at highly placed. Why don't we need to bring them? That's a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely continue to engage government, mm -hmm. encourage government, advocate for that for them to see how best we can realize the dream of bringing everyone, on, everyone on board, everyone, mm -hmm. leaving no one. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still, thank you, uh, Madam Vice President, but I'm still trying to understand and get to the root of this. You talked about power and how uh, bringing everybody on board. Uh, but from my observation, my very young observation, it seems that something happens when when leaders get into power they're corrupted by money and greed and we've seen this happen to even the most uh kindest and most soft-spoken uh, individuals so is there something is there something there that turns even the most humble polit politicians into uh for lack of a better word thieves sometimes um I would think that that's why I said balance of power. Mm -hmm. So many leaders cannot balance power. Mm -hmm. Power is not uh, imposing things 
that you're, that is not in the interest of or adopting certain situations or policies mm -hmm. that cannot really uh, respond to the realities of your people. But mm -hmm. the balance of power is having competent leader, mm -hmm. uh, a leader with competent advisors, mm -hmm. not advisors that would really be there for uh, for themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing in the Gambian context today so many people, so many presidential advisors, and I would just call it presidential advisors. Mm -hmm. I respect the executive, mm -hmm. I respect the institution, I respect the individual. His mm -hmm. Excellency Adama Baru, who is the president, who God okay. has given us as president. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to, and, and this is why it's important for people to differentiate. Mm -hmm. Criticizing a system and criticizing individuals. A system of governance is, is a system that should really ensure that you have a really a leader that mm -hmm. is that is ready to work with competent people. Mm -hmm. And not looking at leaders who are working advisors mm -hmm. left, right and center. Mm -hmm. What we are seeing now, the surge of advisors, the rotation of advisors around the president mm -hmm. is something I'm not comfortable with. Mm. Around the executive, is something that I'm not uh, this thing. The turnover, the surge of hire and fire of civil servants mm -hmm. is something that I'm not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And as a senior citizen, mm -hmm. and being a God fearing person, mm -hmm. and be loving, being a patriotic and loving my Gambia mm -hmm. to whatever situation I find myself. And mm -hmm. these are things that I think the government should look at, should tackle. Mm -hmm. and move on. Okay. Define the other thing is that I think it was very, very early mm -hmm. for, 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 for politics. Mm -hmm. Three years, we had said three years because we had a program. Mm -hmm. We didn't implement the program because of fundamental reasons, mm -hmm. lack of fund, fund, uh, funding. And after dictator of, dictatorship of 22 years, you, mm -hmm. it's just like war. It would take you so many years before you can really stabilize mm -hmm. and then go into advancement or development. Mm -hmm. Yet, we have an additional two years. And those additional two years, with the financing that we have, mm -hmm. with the competence of the uh, finance, financial institutions that we have, mm -hmm. led by the Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs, mm -hmm. I think there's much we can do before next year. And what we can do is to allow this to st stability in the civil service. Mm -hmm. I'm not condoning with incompetence. I'm mm -hmm. not condoning with non uh, violators of uh, the law or violators of policies mm -hmm. or whatever. But all the people, the surge of ambassadors, for mm -hmm. instance, specifically today, mm -hmm. on economical, mm -hmm. we are talking about uh, the COVID, the impact, negative impact of the COVID. Mm -hmm. If you remove, if you if you if you transfer reassign ambassador from this day. You have to pay for the person to come in. You have to also pay for another person to, to go and with his family. And, and that's all economic costs. Mm -hmm. So rationally, I, I would advise, I would rather think that they should allow people to go up to 2021, mm -hmm. have a smooth transfer of ambassadors or at any level of civil service. Mm -hmm. And then um, the things will go smoothly. But then interruptions, interruptions, mm -hmm. you know, it makes people unproductive. It makes people uncommittal, and mm -hmm. it makes people look for other, 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 other greener pastures. Absolutely. Because, yeah, absolutely. So I think also we need to look at the, the politics. We need to focus on the agenda rather than politics. Mm -hmm. Politics would come. Mm -hmm. Twenty twenty one is there. It's here already. It's already here. So mm -hmm. people should continue. I'm not saying they should wait until twenty twenty one, but. They should focus on more, and I'm calling on all political parties, mm -hmm. including the National People's Party of the Executive, that mm -hmm. they create, continue to have social cohesion. Mm -hmm. We need to have social cohesion. We need to have peace and stability. Mm -hmm. We need to promote understanding mm -hmm. at all levels. Mm -hmm. And politics is politics, but after politics, what? We are all Gambians. We are mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. So, And also, we need to st stop um, really slandering. Uh, causing and doing certain things. We must be constructive. What mm -hmm. can you say? What can you contribute in terms of uh, academically? As as an entrepreneur, wherever mm -hmm. you are, what can you do for your country? Not okay. how, what can you damage, do to damage other people? Mm -hmm. Because information of character. 
What mm-hmm. can you do to bring down other people? We should <laughs> that is bring, yes, mm-hmm. let's all try to have the spirit of solidarity. Mm-hmm. Building a one Gambia, one mm-hmm. nation. And Thank you. Yes. Of also having young people mm-hmm. and diaspora on board in this Thank process. You. I, I want us to talk more about the youth. Uh, you know, I, I want to know what your plans are should you get back into government to tackle some of the issues uh, the young people are facing now. Because when we look at the youth, uh, hope in the country and in the diaspora, as you mentioned, is dwindling. And for some, it's completely lost. And, you know, 2016, I'm sure you'll agree, was a very short lived moment of hope, especially for young people. What are your plans for us, should you get back into government? Uh, my daughter, I don't need to go back to government to be able to do something for the youth. Mm-hmm. Wherever I am, mm-hmm. I, I can contribute to the empowerment of youth That's through important. advocacy mm-hmm. and uh, through uh, my engagement mm-hmm. with government. Mm-hmm. I, I stay engaged with government mm-hmm. because I'm part of government. I'm mm-hmm. still regardless of what situation or what relationship is between the executive and the coalition. Mm-hmm. It is the coalition that brought in the government, or the government. Mm-hmm. And besides, fundamentally, I'm a senior citizen. I'm a patriotic. I don't, sit, I don't mm-hmm. sit and allow to be excluded or to exclude myself from responsibility. Mm-hmm. This is a collective responsibility. Absolutely. Whether you're a private sector or whether you're in government, wherever you are, you mm-hmm. can contribute. And my mm-hmm. contribution and plans it goes within the context of the plans of the government, national development. We already have a development plan, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We mm-hmm. have seen in the development plan 2018-20, in which I participated, mm-hmm. you know, as a, as a, as a, as a key, uh, key, as a leader in, in, in this process of mm-hmm. formulation and mm-hmm. formulation and one of resource mobilization and implementation. So mm-hmm. we need to have just focus on what is the national development plan? Creating jobs. Mm-hmm. Government cannot absorb all these people youth in the pu- public sector. But mm-hmm. create the environment by mm-hmm. supporting the indigenous businesses. Indigenous, mm-hmm. We have so many indigenous people in our country who mm-hmm. are committed, who mm-hmm. don't need government for any financial support. What they need is moral support and the enabling environment. Mm-hmm. Help them, give them the supporting and. Uh, environment so that mm-hmm. they can create jobs to absorb these young people. Also, mm-hmm. we need to continue the YEP program, that mm-hmm. is the youth empowerment program that is supported mm-hmm. by the EU government and other uh, mm-hmm. other donors, other partners, mm-hmm. supported by adding, bringing more resources to, mm-hmm. to widen, the, the, widen the scope for entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. We have seen that the world today is led by business. It is, yeah. The the private sector is the engine for growth. Mm -hmm. We have to support the private sector, but I am putting my emphasis and I'm engaging government. Mm -hmm. I'm advocating that they give focus Mm -hmm. to the indigenous businesses. Mm -hmm. And I'm not also saying that the the, the Mm non-Gambians should be be asked to pack and go because they have brought their investment. But Mm -hmm. comparatively, Mm -hmm. Gambian entrepreneurs and businesses would hire more Gambians than you mm-hmm. are seeing in the, in the reality in the mm-hmm. business sector today with the Asians and other people who are here. They hire our people, they hire mostly illiterate, illiterate people. Mm-hmm. I am seeing, I'm leaving this. Yes. Mm-hmm. They stand on their feet for 24 hours and they are paid just chicken chain, like $2,000 is $3,000 is renting. Mm-hmm. The person is young, renting. Mm-hmm. Whether the person is illiterate or literate, the person mm-hmm. must have a decent living. Mm-hmm. So I would uh, really encourage that mm-hmm. we we support the pro- mm-hmm. this thing. I mm-hmm. was fortunate to be to launch the business advice council, but mm-hmm. I'm yet to see it really dynamic, work mm-hmm. up and running. Mm-hmm. So the slow of business, which is the engine of growth, has a repercussion, mm-hmm. a multi really negative repercussion on mm-hmm. on the on the on economic growth, mm-hmm. on the human capital development. Mm-hmm. And also, we need to look at decentralization. Mm-hmm. We must focus on decentralization. We mm-hmm. have had acts upon acts, legislated acts upon acts, mm-hmm. but the implementation of those acts are yet to be uh, d- desired. Mm-hmm. Uh, rural areas are still in the dark ages. Left behind. 
they are left behind. They left behind. Uh, this is no criticism to any government. It is a criticism to the whole system of 55 years. Gambians today, you go to Gambia, you go to even Yarasoma here, a few kilometers from Gambia, from the capital, you mm -hmm. find young people walking on, on, on bare feet. The Mansak, all these uh, training centers, the Masembe that we had in years, uh, we had also in the RDI, you mm -hmm. have SAPO. This institution should be revived and strengthened so mm -hmm. that we, use, we can decentralize opportunities for people. Training, mm -hmm. instead of people coming here for training, they mm -hmm. should really stay where they are. We have experts coming instead of bringing, sending them abroad. It's good to send them when we don't have those skills here, mm -hmm. the knowledge and skills. But then try to focus on local training, local mm -hmm. capacity building. And you also need to have the MDI, for instance. I know mm -hmm. the former Minister of Education, Honorable mm -hmm. Badara mm -hmm. has is a very competent and has a vision mm -hmm. to transform the education sector. Mm -hmm. My sister, um, uh, Claudia Nakul, also has a vision. Yeah. They are all educationists. Mm -hmm. But then they need to, there is need to support them, to give them support so that they can transform the educational sector mm -hmm. by decentralizing. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm happy that we have a colleague now in, in Basse. Mm -hmm. uh, which I was instrumental to the extent that they have named me a mm -hmm. canteen, mm -hmm. the canteen after me, but uh, yeah. which I think that uh, when the people back under here say they will say because Yalokunda <laughs> like eating, I would have expected that they would name me after a classroom which I would continue to support and not the canteen. Yes. But anyway, I appreciate it. It's a recognition that matters. That matters. So we need to have the university still incomplete. Mm -hmm. uh, to really. These are part of the agenda, the mm -hmm. reform agenda, completing the university, mm -hmm. equipping it with Gambian cap capital, Gambian mm -hmm. locals. Let's mm -hmm. write locally. Gambians have capital. You have professors, you mm -hmm. have teachers, you have lecturers, mm -hmm. you have young people who are yeah. coming, politicians. Mm -hmm. We need to open the space also for politics for young people. How do we do that? Mm -hmm. For women also, by mm -hmm. opening, having internal democracy. Mm -hmm. in, in the political parties. We are yet to see that local democracy happening in our local uh, parties. Yes. Because all the local parties is the same leaders for the past 22 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the thing women. Mm -hmm. That's the and not for women just to clap and cook for them. Mm -hmm. Bring them, put them in position of decision making, youth in decision making, where mm -hmm. they can learn who to become responsible politicians. We have very able politicians, very competent politicians, mm -hmm. very competitive politicians. And we have mm -hmm. seen it during the coalition. These are mm -hmm. the politicians who should never be forgotten in history. Mm -hmm. because the, parties, the political parties that came together mm -hmm. to, to form the coalition 2016 mm -hmm. and made this government, made this uh, country mm -hmm. go into a democratic change, mm -hmm. remove, uproot, a 22-year dictatorship should mm -hmm. be political leaders who should never be forgotten. Never be forgotten. In any situation. Yes. On that point uh, about women and kind of bringing them in uh, to the political space uh, across the continent and even globally, we can argue, we've seen that women are continuously uh, being left behind. There's a sense that people are just not willing to accept the power of women and take us seriously. You've even mentioned uh, most women in politics are, you know, seen at the front forefront of politics, but clapping and singing and dancing. The Gambia, though, is one of those countries that, you know, proudly has a good record with female vice presidents, let's say. But are we ready for a p female president? Um, even at the level of gender parity, Gambia is yet to be there, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Having a female vice president and a female, female minister doesn't mean that Gambia is gender uh, parity. Mm -hmm. If you compare to the educated women around in the country and outside the country, mm -hmm. what we have in government and what we have in the private sector mm -hmm. is yet to be desired. So you need to really bring more women into the negotiating uh, table. And mm -hmm. what I'm also saying that uh, you have to remember that the women in government are appointees. Mm -hmm. they, are they can be hired and, and fired at the, at the whims and pleasure of the executive. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. when they when they break a law, or when mm -hmm. they do something against the system, 
mm-hmm. they can be they can be fired. Mm-hmm. But it's important. My point here is for us to encourage. We mm-hmm. women must encourage women to contest as independent candidates. Mm-hmm. Contest as independent candidates to mm-hmm. also be given to, to to contest as a member of parliament, member of as national assembly, mm-hmm. uh, councillors, and so forth. And mm-hmm. they should be supported. Mm-hmm. Be supported so that when they come in, mm-hmm. uh, they are since they are they can represent the views and aspirations of women. But mm-hmm. as political appointees, you have you are limited. Mm-hmm. You can only you can only promote mm-hmm. the policies of government. Mm-hmm. And policies of government are not are, are not inclusive. Sometimes mm-hmm. they are limiting mm-hmm. women in all the different spaces and all the different in all spaces. different spaces and so forth. Mm-hmm. So it is we encourage women mm-hmm. we both mm-hmm. in the private and, and, and the public sector. And public Those sector. who are in the public sector, like in government also, mm-hmm. uh, have a responsibility of mm-hmm. ensuring creating strategies mm-hmm. to, uh, to promote, not necessarily mm-hmm. bringing women to government, but promoting women to be empowered, mm-hmm. to have a position of power in the mm-hmm. councils and in the political parties, as I say. Mm-hmm. And IEC, for example, also has a responsibility of ensuring that mm-hmm. internal politics Mm-hmm. Become a system in the country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Political system. The IC has to ensure that you have a certain percentage quota system. Mm-hmm. Given the quota system for women and and youth, mm-hmm. and because the constitution is in suspense, I would say it's rigid. I wouldn't accept that it is rejected. It's rejected. Mm-hmm. Technically, mm-hmm. but I think there are, there is opportunity. Mm-hmm. And and to, to really be a champion of that mm-hmm. opportunity for the executive, for the government to, to create a space, an enabling environment for mm-hmm. national dialogue so mm-hmm. that we can see how best mm-hmm. we have a new constitution that mm-hmm. will push us into the third republic, inshallah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Vice President, let's move across uh, to neighboring countries in the continent now. You're known, uh, as I said, for leading a peaceful transition of power. When you look at other African countries who have failed to do the same and continue to have contested elections, uh, Mali recently, for instance, what is your advice to them and their leaders when it comes to democracy? I'm just coming from a mission in Guinea Conakry. Mm-hmm. Um, the mission is a uh, uh, peace advocacy mission. Mm-hmm. Uh, we met from the under the uh, auspices of the Africa Jump Center, which is based in Dhaka, mm-hmm. um, created, established by the founder and director mm-hmm. of Duane Ali Uchin, mm-hmm. a human rights activist, mm-hmm. who's well known in the region, in the Gambia and abroad. Mm-hmm. Um, when I say region, of course, Gambia. Mm-hmm. Um, and the mission is just to engage. We engage all the stakeholders, civil mm-hmm. society, youth, uh, legislature, mm-hmm. IEC, and even the executive, the president himself, we met. Mm-hmm. And to engage and to encourage them mm-hmm. that they need to really be, to conform, mm-hmm. and ensure conformity, compliance with constitutions that they adopt. Mm-hmm. When you adopt a constitution, they say two times, two times, you must ready to go. Mm-hmm. That's my principle. And mm-hmm. That's what I would advise our mm-hmm. leaders in the region, mm-hmm. in the world at large, and particularly in Africa. Mm-hmm. And, and what about closer to home in our country? Is democracy implemented, would you say? Yeah, before we, before we go there, we also, mm-hmm. the mission I was complete, that the mission was also to ensure that Mm-hmm. His Excellency ensures, guarantees, mm-hmm. inclusive, transparent, credible, democratic el- elections. elections. So the mm-hmm. violence you're seeing in Guinea today mm-hmm. uh, must totally be, 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 be condemned mm-hmm. by the executive, by all parties. And civil mm-hmm. society should be provided the space mm-hmm. to exclude freedom of expression. Mm-hmm. There should be non-violent mm-hmm. uh, electoral process. Now, mm-hmm. your question of, did you say? Closer to home uh, in the Gambia, is democracy implemented? Uh, closer to home, as mm-hmm. I said, mm-hmm. democracy is 
working. Mm -hmm. It's working because I told you the achievements uh, the government has made thus far. Mm -hmm. And I also honestly told you mm -hmm. where the challenges are. Mm -hmm. And not only the criticizing, but I've made concrete recommendations. Absolutely. As to how mm -hmm. we, could, we could move mm -hmm. as a government, government moving, but moving as a nation. Mm -hmm. Moving as a nation, government has its role and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Our people, the people, mm -hmm. citizens also have roles and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. All of the responsibilities of the people is to keep the to act as checks and balances mm -hmm. for government to do mm -hmm. the right thing. Mm -hmm. the, the, the the civil society, of course, all the all the other systems, mm -hmm. administration, the legislature, the judiciary, mm -hmm. and, and and that's it. So. Democracy is a process. You cannot have democracy and say this is what I need and I'm having it today. Mm -hmm. it is Just as development is a, it's a slow mm -hmm. process. But what we need to ensure is that we remain focused, mm -hmm. we remain on track for mm -hmm. democracy. That's mm -hmm. ensuring good governance, mm -hmm. allowing the rule of law, respect mm -hmm. for human rights, inclusion, mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. governance, mm -hmm. uh, accountability, of course, mm -hmm. accountability. Uh -huh. um, ensuring uh, stability in the civil service, ensuring the reform process is uh, completed as soon as possible, maybe mm -hmm. by the end of the year, we have uh -huh. a bit more time to go, mm -hmm. and ensuring that the groundwork, I see, ensures that the groundwork is really prepared uh -huh. for credible, inclusive uh, elections 2021. Uh -huh. And uh, the question you also asked, the possibility of having uh, women mm -hmm. leadership, particularly mm -hmm. women presidency. Mm -hmm. This is a, this is uh, something not um, comparatively. Mm -hmm. This is not uh, strange and sh shouldn't be surprising mm -hmm. because uh, people are getting more aware. Women are getting more aware. Mm -hmm. Women are getting more engaged. You can see right now with the new political parties emerging. You can see mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. the political parties. Parties, yeah. It's just so. Really, I would urge the nation mm -hmm. to encourage women to, to 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 really contest wherever they think they are competent to do it. Mm -hmm. And I would urge women who want to come up to really come up with the vision of doing making a difference. Mm -hmm. If you're not coming to make a difference, and just because you want to contest, so that at the end of the day you are absorbed by a government system, mm -hmm. because. Women right now, mm -hmm. the, the, our context is not ready. We say it's not ready yet for a female president. Mm -hmm. But it is us, it's up to us, mm -hmm. nation, as a country. Yeah. We've if seen it. Find, if you find people, a woman is competent enough to become a president 2021, mm -hmm. so you encourage, rather mm -hmm. than criticizing, uh, cheering, and, mm -hmm. and really discouraging. Mm -hmm. uh, Women who have come in the forefront, and I perhaps I have to come in the forefront, mm -hmm. forefront contest, contest elections. Nothing is impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you look at Rwanda today, 60% mm -hmm. of the women are in government, mm -hmm. are in the private sector, mm -hmm. are among even farmers. Farmers, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. farmers are now mm -hmm. having autonomy. Mm -hmm. Female farmers are having autonomy. They are good entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and youth are also. Uh, entrepreneurs, wherever people are, just ensure that you provide the enabling environment, mm -hmm. give uh, the opportunities mm -hmm. to exercise their rights as citizens of Thank England. You. Vice President, I think the positive thing to take away from this so far has been that the plans are there, you know, the, the, the strategies are there. It's just about implementation and kind of focusing on uh, on delivering. And like you said, for the youth, for women, for people in rural areas, just even in the diaspora as well, making sure everybody's on board, uh, tapping to people's skills and talents and just ensuring nobody's left behind. But very quickly, uh, before we go, I want you to get your thoughts uh, on, on what is happening in Nigeria and Namibia. Uh, young people have taken to the streets to protest against police brutality, uh, wrongful profiling, gender-based violence, sexual abuse, etc. One of the key messages they are trying to get across is that they're tired of bad governance. What is your reaction to young people having to resort to this to, to get their voices heard? 
You know, it's not only young people, of course, young people, because uh, uh, they are more up to read, they are more informed, and uh, they want to really think outside the box. Mm -hmm. uh, as compared to uh, other generations, the older generations, where mm -hmm. it's, people are looking at culture, if I do this, what are they going to say, and so forth. But, uh, you know, when you push a man or a woman, if you push human beings to the wall, mm -hmm. first they will react. They would, become, they would take defense, not mm -hmm. only defend their fundamental rights as the constitution provides, mm -hmm. but as their rights as citizens to other opportunities. Mm -hmm. What is happening in Nigeria and Namibia mm -hmm. and other countries, in Cameroon, for instance, mm -hmm. should not happen if mm -hmm. the government does the right thing. Mm -hmm. Violence is a fundamental violation of human rights. Right. Mm -hmm. What is good brutality? Mm -hmm. You are in the service, just as we had, we have had the experience. Mm -hmm. The army, comparatively, was the tool of the dictator. Mm -hmm. The security forces were the tool of the dictator. They mm -hmm. misused it. They mm -hmm. exploited it. Its power, mm -hmm. military power, instead of its power as human beings were supposed to protect the rights and fundamental rights and sovereignty of the country. Mm -hmm. And today, I'm saying that, looking at the, what Gambia is doing now in transforming, mm -hmm. looking at the professionalism that is mm -hmm. in, being instilled in the security forces, mm -hmm. you will find that there is a change. People mm -hmm. are now embracing, gradually embracing the security forces and making them, seeing them as professional citizens in the service of the country, mm -hmm. compared to other countries like Nigeria, Rwanda, Cameroon, where they are used, still used mm -hmm. to fight against, uh, to, to, to cause brutality, mayhem, uh, mm -hmm. in society. Mm -hmm. uh, this is why they are this thing. So, uh, but I think there, is a, uh, there are opportunities. I always like dialogue. Mm -hmm. I would advise, because this is going to be viral, mm -hmm. governments that are in those situations should engage, first of all, should sanction Mm -hmm. Brutality, security, brutality, brutality mm -hmm. in all forms of, uh, yes. in all forms, mm -hmm. in prisons, and mm -hmm. also brutality, even for the physically disabled people. Mm -hmm. so the we, we tend to forget them, but we should not forget them. Because mm -hmm. I'm talking to you today, do I know tomorrow, after tomorrow, if I'll be physically disempowered? We mm -hmm. people need to take care, bring them on board, provide them with opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, because violence against violence, Mm -hmm. cause great havoc in a country. It, mm -hmm. it, it jeopardizes and it, it, it how to neutralize a country. It's mm -hmm. democracy. Uh, mm -hmm. For us, for them to champion democracy, there must mm -hmm. be openness. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm happy with the, the, the sanctions that have been taken by the leadership in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. They have sanctioned the police. Mm -hmm. No more that time. But then, the important thing, as Amnesty International says, the important mm -hmm. thing is not to reabsorb them or to redeploy them in other sectors. But to ensure yeah. that they provide them with the right orientation, mm -hmm. right training, the mm -hmm. right discipline, the right opportunities, mm -hmm. and framework of mind, the right mm -hmm. framework of mind to mm -hmm. understand that they are there to protect the sovereign sovereignty of the countries, mm -hmm. the, the rights of people, the rights of properties, rather mm -hmm. than really pushing them, killing, causing mayhem, um, Africa should go beyond this. Beyond Thank Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Vice President. My final question to you, uh, without a doubt, you've made a clear, distinct, and powerful mark in many ways. How would you like to be remembered? What would you like your legacy to be? My legacy would be peace. Mm -hmm. Reconciliation. First of all, I must say that mm -hmm. I'm a program the, the democrat. Mm -hmm. uh, pro-democracy activist mm -hmm. and youth um, champion. Mm -hmm. I really want to be remembered as a peace mm -hmm. mediator, somebody who's always there for peace. Mm -hmm. I want to be remembered as somebody who is there to listen to other people and to feel for other people, to be compassionate mm -hmm. with other people. Not blowing my horn, but this is what I see myself doing. This mm -hmm. is my calling, and I'm mm -hmm. praying for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me to really complete, accomplish uh, this calling 
mm-hmm. of being a peace champion for peace, mm-hmm. champion for democracy, which is the context, mm-hmm. uh, respect for human rights, rule of law, mm-hmm. good, good governance, champion for women and youth to be part and parcel mm-hmm. for, in the development of our nation, mm-hmm. and also champion for the diaspora. These mm-hmm. people, we have to understand, they did not go to the diaspora because they wanted to go to the diaspora. They went to the diaspora because of lack of, for one, it could be a very uh, uh, factors. Mm-hmm. It could be because they went to be, uh, for education, pursue the, what still is for greener pastures. Absolutely. The years did not provide them with the enabling environment to mm-hmm. study, spend so much time juggling mm-hmm. families and work and studies and mm-hmm. coming home to stay mm-hmm. in the yeah. And work mm-hmm. for their country. Mm-hmm. This is the, these are the some of the humble things that I really want to be remembered with. I may not be qualified for them, but this is how this is what is in my heart. Absolutely, I'm sure. I'm very, very sure that you are, Madam Vice President. Thank you so much for your time. It has been an honor. I cannot wait to meet you in person. For now, uh, enormous thanks for joining us, and lots and lots of love to you and your family. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Love you, and I will continue to support you, support all young people. Thank and you. Don't hesitate to call on me on anything, not Thank only you. interviews, mentoring, and what. That's what we are here for. We need to mentor you. Mm-hmm. Our responsibility is to leave a generation that will mm-hmm. do better and mm-hmm. achieve more than we have achieved in our own generation. So Thank God you. bless you and bless all young people and all women, and for Gambia. Please mm-hmm. come together for peace and reconciliation. Mm-hmm. Vision. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, work together as mm-hmm. a nation to build our country. No one is going to do it, do it for us. And mm-hmm. we can't do it if we tear each other. We mm-hmm. only do it if we have common understanding, mm-hmm. respect for each other, mm-hmm. love for each other, mm-hmm. and focus on unity. Mm-hmm. And uh, finally, God bless Gambia and Africa and the world at large. And I'm also praying for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us uh, eliminate mm-hmm. their COVID-19 mm-hmm. and whatever pandemic that is coming that we don't know. Mm-hmm. Those mm-hmm. who are ill, may Allah heal them. I Those mean, who don't have it, may Allah protect them from that. And mm-hmm. may Allah grant us all the opportunities and all the technologies and all the uh, things that we need to know to move Africa as a continent and Gambia as a nation. Thank you so much. Love you and look forward to meeting you someday. So much more. Thank you so much. And thank you as well to everybody for watching and and staying with us despite the technical issues that we had. And I'll see you next weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. My name is Hadi and I'm a journalist and communications specialist. I believe that as Africans, we should be in charge of every narrative coming out of Africa. We have a lot of positive stories to tell and share with the world, and I'm determined to use my platform to make that a reality. This is why I've teamed up with the Fata Network to bring you a brand new show, Stories from the Continent, every Saturday at 4 p.m. Do make sure you join us. There will be lots of fun, informative, and impactful conversation.